It is 826 and it's Sunday, which means it's time for another featured creature. That's right. And that means we get to see Dakota Castile. He's our photojournalist, mm -hmm. one of them here. And he takes us to the Tennessee Aquarium. He's got to have an introduction to the clownfish. This week's featured creature is a bit of a double whammy. Check out why two species of clownfish are able to turn from male into female. Here we have two species of clownfish. We've got our pink skunk clowns and our ocellaris clownfish. And then they're also in there with some bubble tip anemones. They should interact together and form a mutualistic or symbiotic relationship. They are found in tropical regions native to the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. No species are found in the Atlantic Ocean. What would you say is the biggest difference between these two clownfish? So between these two, definitely the personality is really different. The ocellaris clownfish, which are the orange ones, they're more like personable, they're out, they're trying to explore things, they're looking at stuff, they're fighting with each other. The pink skunks are much more reserved. If you walk up to the glass too fast, they'll kind of ball up. They'll spread out eventually once they're comfortable, but they take a lot longer than the ocellaris do. We picked these two clownfish, one, because they are both able to host with the anemone that's in there, two, because we wanted to kind of show a range of how the clownfish can look. How are they able to avoid the stings of an anemone? No one really knows the answer to that. There are a few theories out there. The most popular one is that they have a different kind of mucus coating than other fish, so they think there's a lot more sugars in there instead of protein so that the anemone doesn't recognize that it's a prey item. The clownfish does a lot of work to slowly build up immunity as well, it seems, and they just kind of go in there and wiggle around a lot, and they have to do that a lot. So is there anything else specific that makes this fish unique? They're a unique species because they're actually sequential hermaphrodites, which means that all of them are born male. At the very top, there's a female. So when that female who's dominant, below her, she's got males. So she's got the dominant male at the top and then the juveniles who just hang out with them. Those two will breed together and then she'll lay her eggs like on a flat surface that are sticky, so they'll stick to whatever, and then he'll care for them. And so one day when she's gone for whatever reason, he will turn into a female and become the dominant female, and then the largest non-dominant male will become the next dominant male. So they've got an intense hierarchy of who's allowed to breed and when. Clownfish are able to communicate with each other by making popping and clicking noises. For this week's featured creature, I'm Dakota Castile. <laughs> I think we got it down, Bill. Yeah, I know. Well, there's no <laughs> doubt that uh, the clown has never been too far away from us, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, to see this featured creature again or any others, you can head to our website, newschannel9.com, under the featured <laughs> section.